Infiniti is to Nissan what Lexus is to Toyota. It's a premium brand and this is the G37 Cabriolet. We will talk about the roof, but first of all, I want to show you this. This car is billed as a 2 plus 2, but it's surprisingly roomy in the rear. Even with the driver's seat set up for a six-footer, there's space for little old me, so children will be just fine. But I prefer to be driving, so let's go to the front. then the roof you operate it pressing this button here and whilst it's neatly folding away I should explain that this car comes in one trim level but equipment levels are generous you get sat nav with voice command you also get built-in speakers into the headrest you get climate control and cruise control and that should be the roof done now, is this luxurious car going to pass the car by a big bottle test? Well, let's find out, shall we? Yep, fits in the glove box. We've also got two cup holders here. We've got more storage here. And I know already that this big bottle also fits in the door card. Now, as for getting comfortable for driving, there is a lot of adjustment in the seat, so the driving position is spot on. And also, the dials are really easy to read. When you're just pottering around, the G37 is a quiet car to travel in, both with the roof up and with the roof down. And the wind deflector does a very good job of stopping you from getting blown about too much, which is why I can do this review with my hair down. This car is actually based on a lengthened version of a Nissan 370Z, which means you get a 3.7 litre V6 engine up front, powering the rear wheels. So it's got plenty of zip, and when you put your foot down, it's got a nice tone to the engine as well. The automatic gearbox is very smooth, but if you prefer to be in control of the gears yourself, there's these paddle shifters on the steering wheel. However, while the Infiniti is fast and has sharp steering, its wallowy handling means it's not as fun to drive as a 370Z, nor a BMW Z4 for that matter, and that's not exactly the sportiest of sports cars. And unfortunately, that does bring me on to the downsides. While the ride is generally comfortable over bumpy roads, it does feel like the chassis is twisting and flexing a bit, which is a bit disconcerting. Another problem with the G37 Cabriolet is the interior design, which may be a bit too Japanese for some people's tastes. And if you look too closely, some of the switches are a bit too Nissan-y, which kind of spoils the luxury feel. The boot is okay when the roof is up, but when the roof is down, it's absolutely tiny. I can barely even fit my handbag in here, let alone any sort of suitcase. Finally, there's the price. This thing is more expensive than its European rivals, and that V6 engine drinks fuel like nobody's business, so running costs are pretty high as well. However, you can accept this if you want a convertible that offers an interesting alternative to the mainstream. Subscribe to the Car Buyer channel for our latest videos. Click here to see our reviews of other convertibles. And don't forget to rate, share, favourite and comment on this video.